Hello and welcome to a video. Um, I'm still working on the samurai and I'm doing the brake lines today, so I, uh, oh, the other day I cleaned, I took all the crap out of here and there's nothing in the front. Because I gotta take those seats out so I can hose off the inside and then I got some, uh, I got some of this crap right here. Uh, paint and primer semi gloss, so it's like a satin because I need to, well, I don't need to, but I'm going to paint the dash because this shows you is all gross and nasty. And, uh, and anyways, so I'm doing the brake lines. Um, let me show you. So right here, I took off the, uh, the little fitting that was crimped off, and then I took off those fittings right there, same on the other side. And I'm going to, uh, I have this little bracket. Let me see. And I'm going to basically put a, switch hands here. I'm gonna put a self tapper or something to it right there so it doesn't interfere with the the uh, leaf springs at all or uh, and I was gonna do it like tack weld it right here but I don't know I think it'd look better like right there just about but my problem is this is just a tiny tiny bit not big enough to slide over that so I'm going to take the Dremel and uh, make this hole a tiny, tiny bit bigger, and then, uh, see, I have to make both of these bigger, the inside hole, and then one of them I'm going to have to drill a hole right here to put the self tapper. This one will probably work. I might need a washer, though. And then I have this. Okay, so this clip, the brake line goes through, and then this goes over the brake line. Like, uh, like this. So the brake line would come through this way, and then this would clip on. To hold it from going back out. But I only have one of those clips, so I have some other clips here. Um, I have this one, which would work, but the only thing is that's a lot of thickness together, and I only have about this much space. So I'm gonna have to clearance that one too, even with the thin clip. I'm gonna have to clearance it this way. So basically I'll just put it on the on the Dremel and you know, make it a little thinner. And then if uh, this doesn't work. I have this, but the inside diameter, excuse me, so the inside diameter of this one right here is a half. And this one is, oh crap, a tiny bit smaller than a half, I don't know, three-eighths maybe? Five-eighths? Well, five-eighths would be more than a half, so maybe it's three-eighths, I don't know. Anyways, I would have to separate these two tabs right here a tiny bit and then clearance it in between to make that one fit, and then if neither of those work, I have a cotter pin that I can just bend around but I don't want to do that. And then uh, I need to take, okay, so there's uh, the two brake lines that come down that had these two in it right there. And then, and they're smashed all the way up. There was, it's funny, there's so much pressure built up in between here and the other piece. It, as I like undid it, it just kind of squirted out the threads. It's kind of crazy. But um, anyways. These are for the where the hard line connects into the drum. There's three, even though there's only two of those holes, because one of them on this side, right there, the top one. Well, if it'll focus. Okay, so that top hole right there is for a bleeder nipple, so you can see on this side, right there, and the bottom hole is where the brake line goes in. So, okay, so from the bracket where it connects right there, I'm gonna have a hard line that comes and. It'll go around the U-bolt. Actually, it'll probably go over the leaf. I don't know. I'll figure it out. So I come from here, and then I'm going to have a hard line that's bent coming down, and then straight shot right to there. Because this is never going to bend right here, because if it does sag, it bends over here. So, yeah, I'm going to do... And I'll probably put it, like, right here so it won't interfere at all with the leaf spring. So I'm going to do that. Today, my goal is to get all these... This brake situation done. I don't know if I'll get them bled, but that's my my situation today. I'm gonna get cracking on all the, the clearancing crap that I have to do over here because that's dirty work and not fun work. And then I'm going to uh, the run to AutoZone to get like a brake line with the same fitting here, and it needs to be about a foot long. So I need two of those, and then I need. Actually, that's it. That's all I need to get from AutoZone. Uh, so that'll be pretty friggin' sweet. So, I'll update you guys if anything else happens. But until then, stay cool, I guess. I don't know. Paco! Hey, 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 what's up? Um, so that brake line that I was, the rubber line that I took off that I said I needed an extended one, I couldn't find that anywhere. 
as well as a bleeder nipple. I checked two auto zones and an O'Reilly's. Nothing. So I did a whole lot of... Oh my goodness. Oopsie. I did a whole lot of driving around for nothing. And also those uh, brake lines, the steel ones that I said I need like a foot long, uh, that's a no-go as well because my... The fittings into my... Uh, the back of the brake area in the Samurai. You know what I'm talking about. That area, those are... I believe it's M10 is the thread pattern. It's a metric, obviously. And all AutoZone or O'Reilly's head was a standard fitting. So, rip. Yeah, so we'll pick this up tomorrow. Well, you'll pick it up in like two seconds, and I'll pick it up tomorrow. But uh, that sucks. I'm going to be doing brakes on the 4th, and I didn't want to do brakes on the 4th, because that's not what the 4th is about. The 4th is about burnouts and not brakes. So, I mean, you guess you need brakes to burn. I don't know. Anyways, um... Also, I got a, I got a Mac, and I got Final Cut Pro, so if you notice, the editing is kind of crappy. Well, where this video is filmed, I think there's going to be three before it that are, that I'm editing with Final Cut, so, because I was unable to edit because I didn't have an editing software because my subscription ran up. Anyways, um, if you notice it is better or worse, or like it looks like I'm just starting out again, let me know. I, I'm curious. Hello, it is the next day, and I um, need to pause my music. So it's the next day, I'm continuing on breaks. I, uh, all those pieces that I tried to buy was a fail, I yesterday. And um, so this is what, what I'm doing. What's up, Paco? So this one right here, I just capped off with that little plug that my brother made. I'm gonna just zip tie it up there. I'm gonna see if this works. I don't know if it's going to. If not, then I'm gonna take that bracket that I put there, and I'm gonna tack weld it over here, over here with this one, and so both of them will come down right here, and then I'll have a hard line going from that to that, but that's if this doesn't work. So this one's gonna get capped and zip tied up somewhere up there, and then I'm gonna have this one come, and it's gonna have a, this little one right here, this one foot piece, which I am making. These are the old Samurai fittings. This is a line off of a Cherokee. Cherokees have standard fittings. This is metric, so I had to, straighten it. You can see it's kind of all wobbly and gross because it was not straight. I had to bend it. So it's about the right length. Um, and this is going to go from this to the bottom one right here. And then I have one right here, which is about four feet long. Well, it's the a little bit longer than the wheelbase, and that's just to accommodate for the bends, which is also, it's from actually this exact same piece of brake line. And that's going to go from the top one all the way across the axle to this bottom one because that is a bleeder nipple. So, theoretically, that one bleeder nipple will be to bleed the entire rear brake system. So, I'm going to see if that will work, but it's 4th of July. Happy hell yeah day. Oh, therefore, I can't go to AutoZone and get the flaring tool. So, I'm going to... I'm at a good stopping point with this now. Yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to take the seats out in the other video. So, I'll see you on the 5th. Hello and welcome to another day. It is the 5th, July 5th, I think, and I got the brake flaring tool from AutoZone. And uh, me and Paco here. Paco! Paco! Oh, rip. Anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and start flaring these ones. And then bending the brake lines. So that'll be all hunky-dory and sick. So yeah, I'm gonna get to that. I'm gonna get to getting. Alrighty. Alrighty, so I got a brake line done, and this was the end that was already flared, and then I tried to flare this end, which I'm gonna have to redo because... Let's see if it'll focus. Well, I don't think it's gonna focus. Oh, there it is. Yeah, so you can see it cracked right there. So I got the the propane torch out. I'm gonna heat it up and uh, I can't really, like I have to cut it off right there and then do it again on this one because this one can't really be any shorter. So this one goes from there over to there to the, the bottom hole right there. And how it's bent, it fits perfectly right now. But I, I, I really can't mess this up again. It has to be perfect the next time. So this one, I already have more length than I need. So I'm going to try it with this one, and I'm going to heat up that end first, so I probably shouldn't have put it in this thing. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to fry the end of this, get it nice and hot with the freaking the propane torch there, and um, hopefully it'll be... Oh, 
Alrighty, so I couldn't get the torch to use, so I used map gas. Which is pretty friggin' sweet, got hot super fast. But I got this one flared. Let me see if I can get it to focus right away. Yeah! I got this one all flared without cracking at all. So, I'm gonna take the angle grinder, zip this little doodah off. Zippity doodah, zippity yay. Yeah, I'm gonna take the angle grinder and I'm gonna cut this little guy off right there. Which, of course, I'm gonna focus on. I'm gonna re flare it to the best of my abilities and hope that it comes out all hunky dory. And then, if that's the case, then I get to work on the four foot brake line, which should be easy. And, um, actually, probably not. It's probably gonna be kind of difficult. Anyways, um, yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and get to get to getting, and, um, hopefully. Here in about two seconds in the next clip, you'll see me putting this on. Alright, so here's where that brake line goes, and I really, really, really hope it still fits. Alright, well, it's threading in, and you can see it doesn't touch anywhere along here. It's good to go. All the way up into there. So that's decent, and then the other brake line is going to come from there and run along here. Probably follow the same groove and then bend like behind the shock and then I would like it to follow the top of the uh, the axle all the way up to here. So that one's going to be really interesting to do. This is a more informative video than normal so that's cool I guess. I don't know, tell me if you like it. Because um, usually they're kind of more entertaining. I try to make them fun to watch and uh, this one is not really fun to watch I don't think. It's going to be more um, like how to do such a thing. Anyways. I'm gonna go and get the, uh, what, the what, um, the wrench, um, and a reason it's difficult and I'm having to make my own brake lines and I just go buy some is because this is an 86 Suzuki Samurai, so it's kind of old, AutoZone doesn't really carry anything for it anymore, and, uh, I hope you can hear me over the wind, and, um, another reason is because the, um, the brake lines are M10 thread, which is uh, these little thingies right here. It's uh, metric, is M10, and I can't find that anywhere. So that's real cool, and um, yeah, so we're gonna do that. Alrighty, so here's the second brake line. I already got it bent up to there where it needs to go. Now, oh man, that wind. I want it to go behind the shock, so I'm gonna have to make a bend. So if, you, if you're doing this, you know, get a fixed point, so I have it screwed in, right there, so it can't move, you know, I don't gotta worry about holding it. And I'm gonna tighten it down so I don't have to worry about it spinning, but I'm gonna do that after I get it behind this, uh, um, shock, that's what it's called, Paco. Look at my dog, look at this guy, look at him, just, just hanging out with me, making brake lines, it's just sitting on his head, he don't care. Doesn't care at all. Look at him. Doesn't care. You're a good doge, Paco. You're a good doge. Anyways, yeah, get you a fixed point. Make it so it doesn't spin or rotate like this one does. So I'm just gonna crank it down tight. And then, just start bending. These are pretty malleable. You can bend them real easy. Yeah. See? Just put that bend there. And I just held it like that and did it. Alright, Paco, I'll be right back. I'm gonna go and get a sharpie so I can mark where I need to bend. And I'm gonna bend it up. Um, I got it all bent up so you can see, they come like that, I have them zip tied here only to keep the spacing, I don't want them touching each other, and right now they're not, but that's the only reason those zip ties are there, and then the, that one goes right to there, you already saw that, this one comes up here, and if you're wondering what that brake line, or that brake, that shininess is from, it's because when I had this open, it, I guess it leaked some on there and it just corroded that, but yeah, then it comes up, and follows the axle all the way along, have it zip tied to that bracket and then up under connecting into there and so bleeding is going to take quite a bit because I'm going to have to just because I'm going to ble be bleeding this side first and then once it because this is I put this one in this top brake line in where the bleeder nipple was supposed to go so this will act as the nipple but I'll crack it open over there and it'll pull the air through this line all the way over. So it's gonna take forever, but I got the brake lines all hooked up. I won't bleed it in this video just because I don't want to, because bleeding brakes suck. 
and I would like to have another person here, so I'll wait until that. But as far as the brake lines, I got them all made, I got them all dialed, um, all the brake line, I should say, and um, I need to, the only other thing under here I need to do is the parking brake, which is right there, that's where it comes down. I need to get the parking brake cable to here and to here because I uh, I think a parking brake would be pretty cool. I never had a parking brake when I drove this. I also never had back brakes. I never had uh when I drove this thing for the three years I daily did it, it had, uh, well about three years, two and a half, it had one brake that worked really good and that was that front passenger right up there. And the back brakes obviously weren't connected because the lines were right there. And the front one, the pads are like that thick. So they really didn't grab. But that front passenger, it grabbed and it pulled hard to that side. So that was sick. Anyways, that's gonna be it for this one. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I will uh, see you later on today when I finish the wiring in the next video after this one. You'll see. Later.